Hello, I'm Helen McVeigh and I teach Ancient Greek and I'm also the organiser of the Belfast Summer School in Latin and Classical Greek. Today I'm going to read a section from Caratones Calaroe from Book 5, Section 3, and the translation is by G.P. Gould. And I'm reading on behalf of the actors of Dionysus' Daily Dose. All Babylon poured out to the spectacle and the crowd blocked the gates. With a royal escort, Rodogane waited in the most conspicuous position. There she stood, lovely and confident in her loveliness, as if challenging competition. And as they looked at her, all murmured to each other, we have won, the Persian will eclipse the foreign woman. Let her stand comparison if she can. The Greeks must realize that they are only braggarts. In the meantime, Dionysius had arrived and when he was informed that the kinswoman of Pharnaces was there, he dismounted and approached her with a friendly greeting. With a blush, she said, I should like to welcome my sister. And at the same time, she came up to the carriage. As a result, it was no longer possible for Calaroe to remain concealed. And Dionysius, against his will and chafing at the embarrassment, asked her to come out. At that moment, everyone strained not only their eyes, but their very souls and nearly fell over each other in their eagerness to be the first to see and get as near as possible. Calaroe's face shone with a radiance which dazzled the eyes of all, just as when on a dark night a blinding flash is seen. Struck with amazement, the Persians knelt in homage and no one noticed the presence of Rodogane. The latter herself recognized her defeat, unable to leave and unwilling to be looked at. She passed inside with Calaroe, submitting to be led by her superior. The carriage then moved on with curtains drawn and the people no longer able to see Calaroe sought to kiss the vehicle itself. 